Welcome to Shao Technical Series. In today's session, we will discuss C++ MongoDB client or service developed in C++. And in a previous session, if you remember, we discussed the Boost Beast REST API server. And at the end of that session, we discussed that we will implement a C++-based MongoDB client or service, which will be integrated with the REST API server. So when the browser does a REST API call, the API call will be served by doing a MongoDB query. So in today's session, we will use the C++ MongoDB driver to perform CRUD operations on MongoDB. And once we get the results, we'll pass it back to the REST API server. So you could get to this link by clicking on the tech link here. So I'll open the C++ MongoDB service client link. So as I mentioned, we're going to use C++ MongoDB driver, which is developed by MongoDB. And we will implement a wrapper around that driver so that we can do REST API calls. We can serve the REST API calls by doing CRUD, create, request, uh, create, read, update, delete. So in this session, we'll just uh, discuss how to connect to MongoDB and perform create and find. In subsequent sessions, we will uh, implement the uh, update, delete, and then integrate the client with the REST API server. So this is the data flow diagram. So as I mentioned, we are going to integrate the REST client or a browser with the MongoDB service, which will be running in our Boost Beast REST API server and then it query responses are forwarded to the MongoDB. So I'll go through this description, um, this description quickly. So this is the MongoDB service. We get a JSON string from the browser or a REST client. The JSON is converted to BSON, a binary JSON, to be sent to MongoDB. MongoDB understands only BSON, a binary formatted JSON, which is much efficient and faster. Then performs MongoDB query, query like create, read, update, delete, and then converts the BSON to JSON and responds to the REST API. And the other management operations that are done by MongoDB services to keep the MongoDB driver instance alive. So we'll discuss that when we see the code. And also it maintains a connection pool. And whenever we get a REST API call, the service will will request a client from the connection pool, uses that client to query the MongoDB, and then returns the connection back to the pool. So that way, the pool will maintain a pool of connections, and whenever there is a REST API call, we'll reuse the clients in the pool. Now, we'll go through the source code, and before that, we'll do a quick demo. So I'll run the program here, uh, or else I will just discuss what I already executed. So the program is compiled and it's executed here. When I run it, a document is inserted and I get the document ID. It also does uh, multiple inserts, multiple document inserts. So in that case, the response would be, inserted count and the and the documents inserted i also implemented find so if i find a document by name book 2 i get a response of this document or it could do a find all where all the documents matching the name book 2 are returned so i'll just run it again So I'll switch back to the code, I'll let it run in the background. I'll show the screen again. So the code is here. First is the main function. The main function will instantiate the Mongo client class and creates an object of Mongo client. So we start move the URI to the Mongo client. 
and then as I showed in that demo previously, here. Yeah. So it's going to do insert a document, and then we pass a database name, collection name, and a JSON document in a string format. So it's a, there's a quote here, so it's a string. Similarly, we insert multiple documents, database, collection name, multiple documents. Here I have two documents. So this is the end of first document, and this is the beginning of the second document. And then, so there are two documents. So it's an array. Again, it's a string sized JSON. Then find a document with name is called to book two from database and collection, of course. And then we find all documents with name matching book two from database shelves and uh, collection books. So that is our main function. Then we will go through the mongo.cpp class. So mongo.cpp class will do the actual MongoDB calls. And then that MongoDB CPP uh, imports or includes mongo.hpp. So let's go quickly to the header file, mongo.hpp. So there's a reference here uh, on recommended uh, use of uh, client and pool. So you could go through this link. Now we do a bunch of uh, includes. Then per MongoDB tutorial, they have asked to re redefine in assert if we are doing a release build. So I just kept it there. I'm not sure if uh, the assert is being used uh, in a release build. So per that tutorial, I left it there. It's just uh, it defines the macro assert again. And that, that's all it is doing. Now we have to use some namespaces. So we'll skip through them too key or we can just discuss them quickly this is key value pair it makes an array creates a document it's mongodb document and it's finalized stream finalized from mongodb so this is the service so going forward we'll create namespaces like this so that we can segregate our code base since it's going to be a mongo service so under shrouds, we have created services namespace. And here we create a Mongo namespace in which we create the various classes. So to create a MongoDB driver, we need to define a logger. So I defined a no operations logger here in this format. So this class definition you could get from the reference above, which I pasted at the top of the now the mongodb client constructor takes a url a string url which i showed in the main function so that string url is used to initialize a local private variable url and then we create an instance of the mongodb driver so instance of mongodb driver and then it requires a op logger we pass that logger now this instance once it's created we create a unique pointer of that instance so that it's in the heap memory so that way we don't deal with the stack memory here so say unique pointer then once that instance is created we pass the so to the configure function we pass the instance and the connection pool Create a unique pointer of the connection pool and pass the MongoDB URL. So the string URL is passed to MongoDB URA. And then we create a unique pointer of the pool. So in the configure, we get the unique pointer of the MongoDB instance and the MongoDB pool. Then we still move them to the instance and the pool. So that way we have created the MongoDB pool and the instance. So per MongoDB documentation, this instance has to be alive throughout the program. So that's why 
in the main function, once we create the MongoDB client, we create this instance and keep it as a variable there. And we don't use it anyway, but it has to be created and kept there throughout the program life. And this is the pool. This is what we use most. So when we do a get connection, we get we acquire a client from the pool. Get connection is blocking, so the thread will be blocked until a client is returned. Try get connection is uh, returns as to, um, optional. So this is uh, this will return immediately. So you have to check for the optional if it is a null or it has a connection. In our case, we use this one, and we haven't used in this session the try get connection. And then these are the function, uh, function declarations. So we have created insert, uh, we have declared insert, insert many, then find one, find all. We will discuss these four functions today in this session. In the subsequent session, in the subsequent session, we will uh, implement the rest of the, in the rest of the um, functions. And these are the private variables. Now we'll go to the main C++, uh, the MongoDB, mongo.cpp uh, class, uh, cpp file. So we discussed the header file. So we have included that header here. And then this is the insert. So mongodb client insert function, which takes the database name, collection name, and the document.json which we discussed in the main class of uh, main function above. So it takes the MongoD, Mongo client insert takes the database collection name and the string formatted uh, JSON. So that's what we stood string, stood string document JSON. So now we do the get connection as I discussed in the previous uh, uh, in mongo.cpp file, there's a get connection. This is blocking. So once we get a client, we get the collection from the client. So it has to take a client pointer, index into the database, and then the collection name. So we get an instance of the collection. And then on the collection, we do insert one, and we stood move the this is a json string formatted it's a string format uh, json so from json file from json json uh, json will will uh, create a bson binary json and then we stood move it stood move to the insert one function so that way the collection it will be inserted so once we get a result, we print the inserted ID from the result, get the inserted ID, get the O ID and to string. So when you do that, we are printing this. We were printing the first inserted ID here. 5541 shows 5541, right? So that's what it was printing. Return result in the main function. Similarly, insert many. Insert many will take a, an array of uh, JSON documents. So now, since you have an array of JSON documents in a, which is a string format, uh, the MongoDB client uh, doesn't provide a way to pass a list of uh, JSON objects so that we can do multiple inserts. So that's why we had to use boost beast, uh, sorry, boost JSON parser to parse the string into a JSON array. So that's what I did. So I took the JSON string, parsed it. So I get a JSON object. Now from the JSON object, I check if it is the array. It has to be an array because it's an insert mini. If it is not an array, we return not an array. If it is an array, we get the array. 
then we create a Bison document of each object in that array. So we first check if it's an empty array, then we say empty array, return empty array, or else start an iterator on the array, and then this is a in the array we'll have an object because each book item is an object. So if you see here, we have an array and then we have an object in it. So this object has to be converted into a string format like this. So we take, we output string stream, we create an output string stream, and then from the iterator, we write it to the output string stream as a string. And then from this string, we use from JSON again, and then create a BSON document and put it in the BSON documents vector. So once we have all the BSON documents, we get the client connection, then we insert many and pass all the documents to the insert many. So once we get the insert many result, insert many as its own uh, uh, data structure. So if insert many is true, then for all the inserted IDs, insert many has inserted IDs, which is a stood map of uh, number, index number, and the element, document element. So we get the inserted IDs in this format. ID pair. So then we create a key value pair of uh, create a key value pair of uh, the first index and the value which is the OID and then X ID builder is created. Then we create this result. We create this result of BSON doc the result BSON document would be in this format, result, this is the file. So it will be in this format. We're trying to create this JSON. So we get the inserted IDs, inserted ID zero with the uh, object ID of this number, then uh, insert ID one, object ID of this. So we are returning the object IDs of each document inserted, then the inserted count with the result as the key to the object, this is the key to the whole object. And then that BSON document which we have created, we convert that to, to JSON and then we return that JSON, JSON. So, and we do that because our REST API will only understand JSON formatted strings. See, the REST API will only understand JSON formatted strings. So that's, about uh, the create and find which we have implemented now. Sorry, insert many, insert, insert many, find one and find all. So that's all we implemented in this session. In this subsequent session, we'll add the functionality for the other CRUD functions which we have missed in this session. And then we, in a subsequent session, we'll integrate this with the REST API server. Thank you for watching.